Welcome to The Unspoken Truth. I'm your host, Rob Russ. And I'm Edward Anderson. Well, good day, everyone. Welcome to the show. We've got a doozy today. We've got lots of things going on over the weekend. Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you've had a great weekend. If this is your first time here, welcome. It's great to have you here. And if you're back for more, welcome back. And thank you for your ongoing support. Don't forget, we're available as a podcast over on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We're also available over on Telegram, Twitter, and Rumble as well. Make sure you just scroll down. All of the links are in the description for that. In today's show, we're going to talk about the DOJ, how it's rotten to the core. We've got some more evidence to show you exactly what a scam it actually is and how it's rules for thee and then maybe some rules for me as well. It's really strange. The war in Ukraine is completely tied to this. and You'll see how it's just a giant money laundering, racketeering activity that's going on. And you will see that Sam Bankman Friedman, the guy who was responsible for FTX, was just a useful idiot amongst all of that. And no justice is going to be given for any of the losers from the S or the FTX collapse. And SBF, Sam Bankman Friedman, is going to get away with all of this. It's just unbelievable how rotten to the core it is. So let's get started. G'day, Ed. How are we doing, mate? Living the dream, Robbie. How's your weekend? Yeah, really good, man. Really good. Well, I was kind of sidelined a little bit yesterday, but it was Monday, not the weekend. I uh, tweaked my back in the gym while I was stretching. I was all right in the gym, but then like a couple of hours later, I was like, oh my God. So kind of all of most of Sunday afternoon and all of Monday yesterday, I was pretty, uh, I was actually lying horizontal. I couldn't do anything, but I woke up this morning. I feel fresh as a daisy. So I'm okay. all good. I just bounced right back, man, as a young man. Well, good. Uh, well, I was going to say you're not a young man anymore, but if you bounce right back, you know, maybe, maybe you are. I mean, look, uh, you're doing something right. Look, uh, I tell I, you what I was doing on the weekend. I was chomping at the bit to get back to this uh, uh, unspoken truth thing that we do together and talk about that because there's so much going on. And I'm so glad that you picked this story today. Why don't you set the uh, frame for us? Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for saying that. And yeah, I felt the same way this weekend. There's so much that I wanted to talk about, you know, coming into this week. We have a lot of really good material to cover. And I had a hard time choosing which topic to start out with. Uh, and I chose this uh, Sam Bankman fried story just because it is so irritating and so maddening. Uh, and people, you know, don't really know what's going on there. And there are a lot of, this is a textbook example of how the deep state operates you know in the shadows and how they use useful idiots and th this was like like a little uh a little peek into how these guys actually operate and i want people to be aware of it so they can learn from this and they can recognize the signs for the next time this happens because this is going to keep happening this kind of thing anyway so well before we go on i just want to ask you about that because um, that was something that was top of mind when you said you wanted to talk about this this morning. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, Ed and I don't tell each other what we're going to be talking about on this show. So it kind of gives us something to talk about. Otherwise, we end up having an hour conversation about what we're about to talk about. And then we press the record button and go, oh, <laughs> damn, we already talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we learned not to do that. Uh, and it's worked really well. But, you know, one of the things that you mentioned there is that you, you want people to look at this to make sure that they can understand what's happening when they're seeing that in real time. The hardest thing in the world, I believe, is to actually have foresight. Hindsight is easy because I can look back with 2020 vision and go, well, you know, that happened last time. I'm never going to let that happen again. But here we are where I look back in history and I see these Nazi guards standing around concentration camps. Eh, those guys were just following orders. They were pretty good dudes, weren't they? They were right. They were just following orders, doing what they were told. Then I fast forward here to 2020 and I see the police and I look back at the police and I say, eh, they were just following orders, weren't they? They're pretty good dudes. If you get them aside and talk to them and chat to them, they're just normal people. They were just following orders, right? Enforcing rules and laws and go, ah, oh, it was just a job, man. I don't like enforcing the rules any more than you like being on the receiving end of them, but I'm going to enforce it anyway. And here we are. Here we are with Sam Bankman Friedman. And here we are looking back with hindsight at what this useful idiot has done. But the problem that we've got, and this is the question for you, Ed, is that people have just got no memory. Once upon a time, I'd say they have short memories, but they seem to have no memory of what this actually is and what's going on here. And even though this is unfolding in real time and we're looking back with hindsight, people will forget that they have to have the foresight to see what's going on here. And I'm just like, I'm just baffled around what's going on. Uh, well, that, that's pretty much a standard operating procedure 
by by the deep state, right? Uh, when look over here, look over here. <laughs> that's right. You know, and look, politicians have this figured out. They, they know the game. They know that no matter how bad the scandal might be that they're embroiled in at the moment, as long as they, they they lay low for a little while, you know, the news cycle will will move on and people will forget about it, and that's how they stay in office for so long. But but these, these are corrupt people, and the, so the twenty four hour news cycle is a politician and a bad guy's best friend. Because people <laughs> tend to have uh, short memories. And that's why I predicted in my report, a little bit of a spoiler alert, that, that this guy uh, will never see a day in jail. Because what's going to happen is they're going to slow walk the, the remaining charges uh, so that one day when I wake up and there's going to be an announcement on page 14 of the newspaper that some big, all charges were dropped and no one's going to care. Because you just people, people just forget about it. It's, just, just it's, about it. it's gone away from the public consciousness and... And it's happened like that as well. I've got a story a little bit later on about something very similar to that. But why don't we take a look at your report and what you've got going on here. Let's uh, bring that to the front. Okay, so this week we got even more evidence uh, that our justice system is corrupt. And we got more evidence that this war in Ukraine is not about democracy or borders. It is a big money laundering operation. And right in the thick of all this is Sam Bankman Freed. So let's talk about it. So one of the most significant news events of last year was the collapse of the second largest crypto exchange called FTX. And it started out as uh, just your one of the mill crypto exchange, you know, scandal. You know, they lost a lot of money. But then it morphed into several other stories. And as it turns out, this this young kid Sam Bankman Freed was not the genius that the media made him out to be. He was a useful idiot being used by powerful people in order to launder their money. So let's talk about the news event that just happened this week, which leads me to believe that this guy will never spend a day in jail. So let's take a look at the most recent news. Breaking the U.S. Department of Justice dropped charges of campaign finance violations against crypto scammer FTX founder Sam Bankman Freed. DOJ just sent a strong message that scamming people out of millions is not a crime as long as your donations end up supporting Democrats and the Uni Party. Our justice system is not only a joke, but fraudulent. So the author of that tweet is basically, you know, uh, explaining that we do not have a two-party system anymore. We have a Uni Party. They're all corrupt. Breaking news in crypto today. Prosecutors drop yet another charge against FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried, meaning SBF will face no jail time for the billions of dollars illegally siphoned from customers and then donated to politicians. And remember just how much. Bankruptcy attorneys say FTX donated 93 million bucks to politicians. SBF contributed 70 million himself to mostly Democratic campaigns. But he also contributed to Republican campaigns. There are pictures all over the place of top level politicians hugging this guy and Nancy Pelosi was blowing him kisses in one of his congressional testimonies. Now this is the second big charge to be dropped. The other charge was on bribery. <laughs> so they got rid of the bribery. Now they got rid of the illegal campaign contributions. Now, he's still facing about 11 other, you know, securities-related charges. But I don't think he's going to see a day in jail. And this is why. For the same reason, they don't want to have him publicly testifying about, you know, the, these bribes and these donations to political campaigns. They also do not want him talking about anything else. One of two things is going to happen with this guy. He is either going to get off scot-free, they'll just drag on this, this trial, and then one day it'll just, you know, kind of disappear when nobody is paying attention, or he's going to end up like Epstein. Okay, so we just addressed the political corruption in our country, but now let's talk about the Ukraine connection. Now, I've been telling you for months that I don't think this war in Ukraine is about what the media is telling you it's about. This is a big money laundering operation. This is about money. It's not about democracy, and it's not about borders. It's about money. And Sam Bankman Freed was used as a conduit for people to launder millions of dollars, including the United States government. I promise you, a lot of people are getting rich off of this war. And a lot of people are building beautiful brand new mansions in the suburbs of Washington, D.C., you know, from this war. 
Not to mention the the oligarchs and the other nefarious people, you know, uh, in Eastern Europe who are making a lot of money off of this war. And and Sam Bankman Freed was a large part of this money laundering operation. Don't ever forget that Sam Bankman Freed admitted that FTX was a crypto laundromat for Ukrainian government. Joe Biden gives your taxpayer dollars to Ukraine. Ukraine washes the money through FTX, and then the FTX CEO donates millions to Democrats, and then Democrats steal the elections. And if that doesn't make you furious, what about this little piece of news? Remember this Inflation Reduction Act scam that the Democrats passed that was supposed to, you know, that, that had all sorts of nefarious provisions in it, including hiring an additional 87,000 IRS agents? Uh, our politicians are very happy to squeeze you for every single penny they can get out of you. But they refuse to pass a law that would audit the money that we've been sending to Ukraine. Why? Why would you not want to know where this money is going? In 2022, the U.S. Senate passed a bill to hire 87,000 new IRS agents to investigate citizens' finances. But yesterday, the Senate blocked a bill to monitor and audit billions of taxpayer dollars sent to Ukraine. So there you go. We have more evidence that we have a corrupt legal system in our country, as well as more evidence that this war in Ukraine is nothing more than a money laundering operation. Sam Bankman Freed, he's just a symptom. He's just a useful idiot. The real evil are the people who make up the deep state, who make up the machine, who make up the swamp. So don't be fooled about the stories that you hear in the mainstream media. This is why you have to look out for yourself. The government is not here to help you. The government is not going to do you any favors. Nobody is coming to help you. It's all on you. So reduce your exposure to your bank. Put a bunch of your money into gold and silver and establish streams of passive recurring income. Ed Anderson, live from Minnesota, signing out. Nice work, mate. You uh, Thanks, you, see, you, see, <laughs> you seem like you were getting a bit riled up yeah. there. I could, I could tell the riled up bits were edited out. <laughs> I'm waiting for my letter from the Pulitzer Prize Committee. Um, and, uh, so, There's so, one small it, correction in there, if I may, first of all. Sure. Yeah, so you, you said that um, the war in Ukraine is not about freedom, it's about money. And you said that you've been saying it for months. But actually, that's incorrect. You've been saying it the entire time, man. That's right. Very good. Thank you, you, for, you, thank you for saying that. Yes. I, thought about I, that. I just noticed that you said that. It's like, no, nah, man, you, be, you said that from the yep. start, that that actually yep. was the reason. And um, when you join the dots like that, when you say that the money goes to Ukraine, Ukraine gives it to FTX, and then the money goes back to the Democrat Party, you go, what, $193 million of taxpayer money went to Ukraine via FTX, via Democrats and Repu What? That's crazy, man. Yeah, and 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 everything I said there uh, is provable. It's, it's, it's all documented stuff. I didn't make anything up in that story. So did I convince you about this connection between uh, the government and Sam Beckman fried and uh, ab absolutely and and you can tell you can tell by his body language right when he gets walk when he gets perp walked back and forth in and out of the court and stuff like that he's just completely silent and his lawyers are like don't say a word whatever you do don't say a word and and then you don't hear any comments about anything from him he, he's not making any comments he's been completely muzzled by his lawyers but his lawyers were appointed to him by well probably the government right I don't know that for sure but you know what it does is it shows like I put this slide back up because the DOJ is rotten to the core. It just proves it because we know exactly what you said, that the money goes to Ukraine back to or what came back to FTX and then off it went. But the worst part about it for, in my in my mind is there's no justice for anybody because there was people that lost a lot of money in FTX, man, a lot. Oh, yeah. Well, yes, of course. You're absolutely right. Now, th those people who lost money privately, they, they could sue Bank and Freed privately if they wanted to. But we know... That never works, you know. The, uh, so, yeah, yeah. If I were Bankman Freed, if I were him, man, if I if he had any money squirreled away somewhere, I'd use that to buy or to buy to hire some taste testers uh, to have some taste. You know, taste my food, will you? Hey, taste that. I want to eat that. Yep. It tasted first, right? Because there, there, there are a lot of powerful people who do not want this guy, you know, giving away, uh, you know, the scheme. And, and and he's just a snot nosed little college kid, you know. Uh, he, he he spends his days playing games, playing. You know, he's a gamer, you know. And, he, and don't, don't you think that um, the 
like his body language and the way that he is kind of shows that he's not going to open his mouth. Well, like, if you saw that, and that, and I was going to make a joke about that. You know, when that the image of him walking out of the courtroom, you know, his arms weren't swinging, they're down by his side. You know, yeah, it reminded me of that old SNL skit of the, of the, of the girl who did, didn't, swing his, didn't swing her arms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, he's just a kid. He's just, yep. an, he's just an awkward, socially inept kid, right? You can see, he, he's like the classic nerd sitting against the wall at a, at a school dance, right? Uh, too afraid to talk to the girls. You know, he, he, he's a nerd. He, and, uh, uh, but, they, uh, but his parents were MIT professors, really mm. connected uh, in uh, uh, leftist, you know, in, in the socialist uh, system. Um, they, uh, they, they, by the way, these guys are really good friends of, oh, what's the SEC's guy's name? Uh, Gary Gensler. Gensler. They're, they're buddies, they're pals. Gensler is a family friend. I mean, come on! You can't make this stuff up. So, and, and so he was obviously he was he was being used. They set him up. He wasn't the, the brains behind FTX. I promise you, he's just a guy where they said, "All right, sign here. All right, sign here. Sign here. Sign here." You know that oh, I I completely agree with you because when when you think of like an entrepreneur and somebody that um, have you ever seen the owner of Binance comes out like he's a Chinese guy. He's like. But he's like really super articulate, man. He's so smart. And then you see the, um, think of like Mark Zuckerberg. When Mark Zuckerberg puts on a suit and gets in front of a committee hearing in Congress or whatever it is, and like he's really dialed in and squared away. And these people, these entrepreneurs, that these real entrepreneurs, these real business owners, they, they, are, they have proper media training. They have proper coaching. They're public speakers. They know exactly what it is that they're talking about. But this SPF guy, he, he didn't have any of that. And, and to your point, what's happened is it's like, hey, bro, just, just sign here and you can play video games all day. Just go for it. Just do whatever you need to do. And um, yeah, he, and he's like, well, am I going to get in trouble? No, no. Even if you do, don't worry, man. We're, we're going to cover you, man. We'll, exactly. we'll be okay. Everything will be okay. Exactly. You and your missus, you can go and do, you've got, you've got heaps of money, man. If you've got some causes you want to donate to, just let us know and we'll let you do that too. Yeah, well, I'm sure they told them which cause to. Oh, by the way, uh, next week you're donating $100 million to the Democratic Party, just so you know. No way, am I? Wow, yeah. that's cool, man. My mom and dad love the Democrat yeah, yeah. Party. And, yeah. and you can take all the credit. You know, Nancy Pelosi is going to love you. The Democrats are going to love you. Nancy who? You. What? Everyone's going to love yeah. you, man. Everyone. <laughs> don't worry about that. Everybody's going to love you. Oh, I, boy, I'm so popular. I've never been so popular in my life. Uh, so, Listen, we're going to change the name of the unspoken truth to the to the cynical old men. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maybe that's but, what it has to go to. But uh, you, you bang on there. So, so tell me, Ed, with your uh, your ability to forecast the future, you've said that you don't think that SBF is going to face a day in jail or end up like Epstein and yeah. um, pretending to strangle himself or something crazy like that. But where do you actually think it's going to end up? I personally think that I, I think nothing will happen. I think that he, he gets a kick up the ass, a slap on the wrist, and that's it. And he just goes about his life. It's, that's where I think it ends up. Yeah, I think the way it's going to end up is he's going to end up in uh, some country far, far away uh, just because uh, it's going to be too dangerous for him to be set foot in America because there are too many people here that he's – he lost fortunes for, so he's not yeah. going to want to step a foot on a soil anymore. He's going to end up in uh, in a nice tropical country somewhere with a non extradition treaty, with a boatload of money in the bank. And uh, thanks very much for being a useful idiot. See ya. There you go. And you know, uh, and his parents are going to come down and visit him from from Harvard uh, every year to you know, to, to social. No, no, no. I, I think, and I think, I think he's going to quietly, and he's going to he's going to be given marching orders. Okay, man. Your job now for the rest of your life is to be anonymous. No more spotlight from you. We don't want to hear peep from you. You just go on and live a quiet life. Because and the powers that be are going to tell them, because if you come back here and, and you expose us again, we're, we're going to take care of you. So I think mm. he's going to quietly just kind of melt away uh, into oblivion. And uh, uh, every once in a while, for the next year, his name is going to come up because they're going to be, and, you know, it, it, they can't completely... They can't make it that obvious. It's, it's bad enough that they've dropped the two most important charges already. That's bad enough, you know. Uh, uh, so they can't. So they have to have something going there just to kind of, you know, show. But my guess is that uh, if we have the other party in office uh, in, after the next election, then that's when they will definitely drop it because they'll, they'll be running out of time. But if their party is still in charge, then they can afford to, yeah, let it. It's, it'll be a show trial here and there, not an actual trial though. 
So, yeah, so he, he will just quietly go into oblivion. Uh, he better hope that's the way it p- plays out. Because the other option is... Yeah, he gets locked up or he uh, goes away completely. Gets, gets yep. deleted completely. Yep, he's going to be epstein Yeah, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to revisit this story periodically and see where it is in the news and give you the unspoken truth. And just remember, we're kind of putting our flag in the ground here saying what's going to happen. Don't forget to come on over and follow us as a podcast over on Spotify and Apple. Come on over on Twitter and make sure you come over to the Telegram channel. The links are all in the description below. Well done, Ed. Thanks very much for bringing that to us. We'll see you in the next one. It's for now. Thank you.